Staying in the Middle East and amid soaring Israeli-Palestinian tensions, Israel itself continues to witness mass protests as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government seeks to weaken the Supreme Court while limiting judicial independence. Critics say the move upends Israel's system of checks and balances and pushes it towards autocracy. As well, feminists say these government reforms, due to the growing influence of its ultra-Orthodox partners, will have a massive impact on women's rights. Joining me now from Jerusalem is Professor Ruth halperin Kadari, a founding director of the Ruckman Centre for the Advancement of the Status of Women at bar -Ilan University. Professor, thank you so much for your time. This government is Israel's most right-wing ever and is overwhelmingly male. Only nine out of 64 members of the coalition are women. But it's the ultra-Orthodox parties that is sparking concern. Tell me, why is that the case? So you're right. This is the most right-wing and religious government that we ever had. And if you look at the coalition itself, the um, ultra-Orthodox and the national ultra-Orthodox parties together have a majority even more than the Likud party, which is the largest party and it is the party of Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. And the worry is that they now can have um, unlimited power to legislate not only the judicial overall, which they are planning to do, but um, a, a variety of uh, legislation that will really um, backslide not just the democracy in Israel, but severely um, harm women's rights and women's status and all the gains that we worked for um, to achieve over the last 75 years will be um, totally um, drawn, drawn back uh, in terms of women's rights. But can you tell me in more detail what exactly is also under threat with these reforms when it comes to the status of women? Part of the upcoming legislation is to expand the power of religious courts, rabbinical courts within them, and recall that there are no women in these religious courts. There is no woman uh, religious judge in the rabbinical court. So this is one one example. So Israel has never been a full democracy in this in this sense. Now, um, looking at the agreements between the coalition uh, parties that we just mentioned before, uh, we see um, uh, a long list of laws that will curtail women's rights, such as the legalization of um, openly gender discrimination on the basis of religious belief. Um, there is upcoming legislation to uh, further legalize uh, gender segregation in public spaces um, and in the academia as well, um, on public transportation, for, for instance. Um, there is a long list of, of other laws, but we also have to look at the larger picture, which, as you mentioned at the introduction, that the, the plan is to weaken the power of the Supreme Court. And it is the Supreme Court, the High Court of Justice, which actually had um, the largest role in providing for women's rights throughout the years. And once this court is weakened, um, the, the, the risk is that all the legislation, the discriminatory legislation can pass through without anybody to, to stop it. But at the end of the day, the problem in Israel is demographics, is it not? Where the birth rate among ultra-religious communities is far higher than other sectors of Israeli society, which means their power and influence will continue to rise. So... It's true that the birth rate of ultra-Orthodox uh, community in Israel is actually the largest in the developed uh, world. It is 6.6 um, um, per woman. And right now, ultra-Orthodox compose 13% uh, of Israeli society, and their number will increase. But we also should look at the current demonstrations opposing the um, uh, government plan. And what is really interesting and, and a cause for optimism is that there are more and more religious people joining in the protest because many of them realize that weakening the court 
can eventually also um, harm uh, their rights and their interests. Yet for many outside of the country would still think of Israel as being relatively progressive when it comes to women's rights. Well, the, the, the picture is more complex than that. Um, women in Israel have had to fight for their rights ever since the beginning of, and, and even before the establishment of the State of Israel. We even had to fight for our suffrage um, right. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, there is no full gender equality in Israel at, at the moment to begin with. So um, the, 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 the danger that we are facing now is really the greatest ever since the state of Israel was established. Professor Harper and Kadari, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.